greatest female racing driver of all time? Wow, that's a big claim. Let's learn about it. This is from Josh Revels. It'll be linked in the description down below. It's a Discord suggestion from Andre2500. So thank you guys very much. Uh, from what I hear, this woman was known as Wonder Woman. And uh, from the, to be honest, the most ruthless, craziest, most intense racing series, arguably in recent memory, uh, Group B. Uh, Cut this video learned. off, if I may, with Carmen Yorda. Bear with me, please. For those of you unaware, was a racing driver who competed in series such as Formula 3 and GP3 in the 2010s. She was also signed to the cool. Lotus Formula 1 team as a development driver from 2015 to 2016. To the untrained eye of the average earthling, this would be considered a fantastic feat and a key step forward to help get female drivers back onto the Formula 1 grid. But it wasn't quite that way. I'll explain this in another video because I'm just going to go off on a tangent here trying to explain what this was all about. But the point is that in 2015, Yorda voiced her approval of a separate championship for women. And this is what she said. It's not fair that women have to compete in the same championship as men because we're never going to become world champion. And I think that women deserve that chance. Whoa. Oh yeah, Carmen? You don't think women can be competitive on the main That's stage, huh? Weird. Well, I'd like to introduce you to Michelle Mouton. Mouton, for those of you on a... Yeah, I think that's a little short-sighted, personally. Uh, that's kind of, what, what is she basing that off of? I mean, this is how I break it down. Uh, scientifically, it's usually the case that, uh, you know, biology supports males being slightly stronger uh, than females, usually. Uh, but, you know, females are usually very smart, <laughs> especially at a young age, you know, smarter than males usually, and also have I've heard, I think, have fast reaction times. I think that'd be good for racing, no? So, uh, aren't we all human beings? I think a woman could easily keep up with a man on a racetrack, if not beat him. Where? As a former rally driver from France know. who competed in the World Rally Championship from 1974 to 1986. She was lauded awesome. by the likes of Sir Sterling Moss and Nicky Lauda, two of wow. the most respected people in motor racing. Even I know those names, yeah. Sterling Moss, absolute legend. Nicky Lauda. Again, full stop. And it's not without reason because Mouton was incredible. Oh, I can't wait to see this. This is cool. Now, I did not know about this, so this is going to be a learning experience for me. Green, greatest female racing driver of all time. Uh, seeing that Audi. Did she drive that Audi? Oh, geez. This is going to be good. <laughs> Mouton was born in Grasse, France in 1951. She was first introduced to the concept of racing cars at 14 years old. Although her first proper foray nice. into rallying came in 1973 not as a driver, but as a co-driver. It was Ooh, then her father who suggested okay. that maybe she should get behind the wheel of a car. Because, you know, live your life through your kids, right? After competing <laughs> in regional events throughout France in 1973, Mouton made a World Rally Championship debut in 1974, finishing 12th on the Tour de Corse. Naturally, men throughout the paddock could not cope with the concept of a woman beating them in a oh, car. Geez. Oh, how I say, incredulous. Rumors abound Mouton was running an illegal engine, but sure enough... You know, I, I don't think that goes for all men. I don't know what that stems from. I try to be the best man I can be. Uh, I recognize that... All people are humans, male or female. It doesn't really matter uh, at the end of the day, does it? I mean, I wouldn't have a problem if a woman beat me in a race. I, I don't know why that would be a problem. It'd just make me want to try harder and get better to win. I mean, you want to win in a race, no? So, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't really matter who beat me. I lost. I want to win next time. It was perfectly legal. It. She was later crowned the French champion and European ladies champion. And by now, some of you Anorex will be saying, No, oh, she's not a racing driver. She's a rally driver. Well, to answer that criticism, Mouton competed in the 24 hour of Le Mans in the oh, two wow. liter prototype category with Christine Dacremont and Marion forming an all female lineup in 1975. And you can curb your prejudices because they won their class. Whoa. Mouton's performances in the ring were vital to. Uh, because that's some intense racing. Any rally to me is intense. Uh, any sort of Le Mans race is, again, one of the pinnacles of motorsport. Uh, very intense, very demanding. Wow. 
<laughs> talk about some happened. credentials. Yes, elected not to pursue a career on the closed circuit. Nonetheless, her results attracted attention from the likes of Elf and Fiat France. She achieved a moderate level of success with Fiat on the world stage from 1977 to 1979. However, in 1980, Audi Sports signed her to the WRC program for the 1981 season. Now, as you could imagine, there was a fair amount of criticism with regards to her signing. This coupled with her co-driver being Fabrizio Pons, some of the comments being thrown around almost eradicated any faith one would have had in humanity. But this all changed at Rally Portugal, where Mouton won seven stages and finished fourth overall despite experiencing electrical gremlins throughout the rally. She also performed strongly in Greece and in Finland, but the real breakthrough came in San Remo. 1981 World Rally Champion Ari Vatanen proclaimed, Never can, nor will I lose to a woman. Oh, well, wow. Guess what? <laughs> Uh oh. Don't speak too soon. Mouton and Pons took their first rally win, beating out their male rivals and shutting up the critics. Oh. And I bet that hurt them, because trust me. I know. And it was the highlight Damn. of what was a decent first year in the top flight of rallying. And certainly when you consider that she was up against some genuine legends of the rally scene, including Stig Blomqvist, Ari Vatanen, wow. Henry Toivonen, and Hanno Mikola. Of course, she didn't contest the full season, but her first full season came in 1982, and this would be the year when Mouton would really make her presence felt. The first round was at the renowned Monte Carlo Rally. Mouton Ooh. was performing as well as you would imagine, and had set the fastest time on the Col de Torini stage. But then, on the 12th oh, stage, yikes. she slid off the road and out of the rally. The crash concussed Pons, while Mouton injured her knee. But this didn't prevent her from making her debut in the Swedish rally. She was running third and performing well, before crashing into Hanno Mikola's grief-stricken car, and eventually finished the rally in fifth place. These two rallies didn't really curb theories that Mouton Tom was perhaps unable to cut it with the big boys. But she put those theories to rest at the next round in Portugal. Mouton took 18 stage wins and would win the rally outright, which immediately bolstered her up to second place in the standings, wow. just behind 1980 world champion Volta Rol. She would miss the Safari rally, but would make big her return there. at the Tour de Course in France. However, she wasn't able to match the pace of the front runners and finished in seventh place. But crucially, Rawl didn't score that much more points either. Then came Greece. These stages are known to be real car breakers. Ooh. Pace is one thing in this Looks rally, rough. getting it to the finish is another deal. Raw right. had won the rally twice previously, but he didn't win this one. She got it. Mouton took Added the to win ahead of Rule and Toivonen, well, track, and at that stage. stage was the only driver to have won two rallies that season. In the overall standings, she closed the gap to Rule to wow. just 20 points, even after missing the round in Kenya earlier that year. And in the next round in New Zealand, Mouton was Ooh. battling for the lead of the rally with Rule and Mikola. However, she retired due to a broken oil pump, and the win instead went to 1979 world champion Bjorn Valdegaard. This put Mouton 32 points behind Rule, but in the next round in Brazil, Mouton would rebound by winning what was an arduous rally. She retired from the next round in Finland after incurring damage from a jump and then finished second in San Remo to Rural. Initially, Audi were not prepared to attend the African rallies in Kenya and Cote d'Ivoire, but given how close Mouton was to Rural in the standings, they needed to attend the rally Cote d'Ivoire if they were to have any realistic chance of winning the title. There was something else too. Just before the rally started, Mouton received news that her father had just passed away from oh cancer back in Nice. His last wish was that Mouton start the rally. And this clearly Jeez. gave Mouton some drive because by the end of the first day, she was eight minutes ahead of Mikola and almost half an hour ahead of Rawl. And this was crucial because if Mouton can win the rally, Rawl's lead in the standings oh would be reduced God. to just two points going in. Look at how close, way ahead of everyone else in the standings too. Just a two-way battle here within two points of an absolute legend, even I know that, uh, because I watched a video on, on Mr. Walter and, uh, he can drive a car. <laughs> into the final round. The temperatures of the wow. rally were extreme, with the cabin temperature reaching 150 degrees Fahrenheit, oh which is barely God. acceptable for people being cremated. However, while the drivers were feeling the pinch, the cars also were struggling to cope. Mouton began experiencing mechanical issues, yeah. including transmission problems that cost her 25 minutes, and a complete fuel ingestion change on the last day. These issues gave Rawl and his Toyota comrades an opportunity to catch up. And then, disaster. Mouton rolled her quattro, which saw an end to her rally. Rawl cruised through to take the win and the championship with it. Oh and he was God. happy about this. Because early so close, right? That's gotta be a heartbreaking day. 
a lot of weight on her shoulders with that horrible news. No one wants to hear. Uh, and then to go out in really rough conditions. Uh, the car doesn't even want to cooperate. I mean, rallying in absolute heat like that. Yikes. You just ask him for trouble. You're wrong. He stated that he would have been fine if he lost a championship to Mikola, but not to Mouton, saying that this is not because I doubt her capabilities as a driver, but because she is a woman. Yeah, that is just like, what is that? <laughs> so now that what an ass. We established that Rule was one Come of the on. greatest rally drivers of all time, but still yet to prove himself as a human being. All that was left was the final... I mean, yeah, much respect to the guy. He obviously was really good. I've seen videos of his footwork on my channel. Uh, the guy could whip a rally car around like no other, but dude, still, I, I respect that, but I don't respect like that thought. Like, dude, what the hell, man? <laughs> Oh, I can't lose to a woman. That's that's just asinine. Like, dude, get over it, man. In Britain, Wilton held that's off Toyden to take second in the rally behind Mikola and thus secured second overall in the driver's standings and also gave Audi their first manufacturer's world title. And despite losing to this Nobel Prize winner, Mouton was awarded the International Rally Driver of the Year Award at well, the Autosport Awards Gala. Rule also later conceded Much that deserved. Mouton had deserved her victories and it was only through sheer luck that Rule had won the title. Mouton would compete in the WRC for a further four years Although her last wow. full-time campaign was in 1983, constant mechanical failures marred her season, and eventually retired. Well, and that's tough too, right? You can't totally knock a driver uh, if they have some bad seasons, even after a good one. Uh, for just some things are out of your control, especially racing. We all know racing is a tough sport, right? Motorsports are expensive, and uh, your cars can break. Uh, car guys around the world know that. Cars are a love-hate relationship. Uh, they can be fun and exhilarating at the same time. <laughs> Anything mechanical is destined to break some sometimes, and uh, sometimes may seem like a lot, especially if you're racing. You know, it's out of your control, right? Whether you're a man or a woman. So, tired from rallying all together in 1986 to focus on her family. She was made Knight of the Legion of Honor in 2011, which is the highest French order of merit for civil rights, and That's was cool. inducted into the Rally Hall of Fame by Carlos Sainz in 2012. She was also her. involved in the FIA's Women and Motorsport Commission, which will be explained by fellow YouTuber Kira Megan. Now, the Women and Motorsport Commission is the biggest movement from the FIA to endorse females in motorsport so far. It was created back in 2009. That's Cool. Michelle Moulton, a former French rally driver and the first female to win a round of the FIA World Rally Championship as its president. Back in 2009 when the commission started, Michelle said, Women already have their place in motorsport. They have proved it. But for many years, people have asked me why there have been no women following in my footsteps. I really hope that the commission can help answer that question and that we can attract and support women in all areas of our sport. But what is the commission exactly? They say that it had been made to put practice actions and events into place that will strengthen the inclusion with women in in all areas of motorsport and will work closely with the FIA and also other governing bodies to promote females up into these motorsport categories. So far since its launch in 2009 they have proven what they said by in 2011 starting the support of the FIA CIK Trophy Academy. In 2015 they created a county rallying program for rallycross and probably the biggest movement so far was in 2018 and 2019 when they set up the FIA Girls on Track Challenge which was promoting young karting girls aged 13 to 18 up to F1 and also they get a chance to win a seat in the Ferrari Driver Academy. In these years, they also created wow. the FIA Women's Driver Academy, meaning there is a place women can go to and be picked up. In my view, the 1982 World Rally Championship is one of the more crucial seasons in the whole history of motorsport because it demonstrated something important. It went against the opinion of the time. And more so than yeah. that, it completely disproved what Carmen Yorda would say over 30 right. years later. Women can't be competitive against men in motorsport? <laughs> Bullshit. Carmen, I don't get that. Because as Michelle proved in 1980, yeah, that statement by Carmen is just whack. Like, what are you talking about? Who they can be. Wow. So Sterling Moss Way regarded to be her as one of the best. Like a, a good influence on people, right? If you allowed like, to call her smokes, a superwoman, dude. and frankly, praise from those two is all you need as a racing driver, no matter what your background. And her achievements should be celebrated if we are to encourage the next generation of young female drivers to come through and to reach for those seemingly unattainable heights. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider liking this video and subscribing. That was great. Uh, great video. Great breakdown. Uh, Michelle Mouton. What an impressive driver. Driver. That's right. Not just woman, but driver. Doesn't matter if you're a man or woman. If you're good, you're good. And she was really good. Good honor for being good after her life in motorsports and uh, just promoting a great 
uh, view, a great inspiration uh, for girls, women out there that would like to get behind the wheel and throw down. That's really, really awesome. And uh, you know what? I'm all for that. You know, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to see when I watch motorsports, uh, I want to see good competition and uh, drivers that earn their that earn their spot, right? Uh, it doesn't matter if they're young, old, any from any country in the world, and uh, if they're male or female, if they earn their spot and they're good and they're going to compete and they want to win, good on them, right? What's it matter? Uh, so that's how I feel. Uh, that was really cool to learn, though. I kn- I didn't know anything about this because, uh, like I said, I'm really still learning about the whole rally world, and there's just such a rich history with it. Uh, it's really, really refreshing and really exciting. Uh, totally different than what I'm used to here in the state. So really, really digging this stuff, as I say or have said a lot lately. Thank you guys for the awesome suggestions. Keep them up in the comments on Discord, wherever you want to reach me. Really, really cool. Uh, Please have your discussions down in the comments on this one too. Do you remember seeing her uh, back then? How exciting was it? That 82 season sounds like uh, really down to the wire. So uh, were you around for that? And uh, what are some other women in motorsports uh, that... uh, are inspiring to you or that you know about that uh, deserve some credit. At my local short track uh, growing up, I went to the races a lot and there were always women there. So I think that's a good thing. That that's, that's my experience with it. So anyway, guys, please throw a thumbs up, a like on this video, help it out. I do appreciate it, especially if you learned something new uh, and just enjoyed this. Uh, also, subscribe, join our amazing community on here and uh, don't miss another fun video like this. Check that description, like I said, for this original video so you can watch it uninterrupted, and as well as the Discord and other ways you can interact with me. My name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. Till next time, guys. Catch you later.